So I've been working with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K for almost about a year now. It's actually gotten to the point where I actually own one. I'm filming with it right now. But is it still worth buying in 2021? Well, spoiler alert, yes. Yes, it is. Well, hello there, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I highly appreciate it. Welcome. So the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K, a mouthful, so I'll be referencing it as the BMPCC 6K. Not any better, but it's a pretty interesting camera to say the least. And if you're watching this video, then you might have a little bit of interest in it. You may have seen a ton of review videos on it. You might also be asking yourself, why am I making a video on it? It's a pretty outdated camera released two years ago. There's a lot of new cameras out in the market and yet I'm here making a video just about it. Well, let's actually start a dialogue about that real quick. It's not all about the latest gear. We live in a world of supply and demand. We want things as soon as they come out. That's why websites like Amazon exist and why expedited shipping costs so much. People are willing to pay for that in order to get something as soon as possible. On top of that, people want the newest and latest greatest things for as little as money as they can spend. All of that to say, it can really get to a point where you're overthinking a purchase that you've been wanting to buy or when something new comes out, you feel like you really, really need to get it, which in most cases, you really don't. Well, I'm here to break the norm. I'm here to convince you that you can own a camera for more than a year and not have to buy a new one. So let's talk about why I bought the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K in 2021. So let's talk about the specs a little bit. I won't go into too much details because there are a ton of videos that are very detailed about the specs on this camera, but I'm just gonna list a few off and some of the applications that I use them for. This is a 10-bit camera that can shoot up to 6K RAW and ProRes high quality, which means that you're gonna get some pretty high quality footage there. This camera is almost comparable to some of the high-end cameras used nowadays in cinematography and TV production. This camera can also shoot up to 50 frames per second at 6K. So imagine this, you're shooting at 6K, you're getting a huge resolution while also being able to shoot a little bit of slow motion. You've got dual native ISO on this camera, which really helps in low light situations. It actually makes it a low light beast. And ergonomically, it's actually a really nice feeling camera. It's got a classic DSLR feel to it, but also it's got this touch screen that works flawlessly. Basically, all the parameters of this camera are a touch away when you need to make adjustments. You don't always have to go into the menu to make these little adjustments here and there. You can literally touch the touch screen and change your ISO, change your aperture, make sure you have the right white balance. Now there are a lot more things to this camera, like for example, you can set parameters to the function buttons up top so that you can help yourself during run and gun situations. You can basically rig this camera out to be a high-end cinema camera. Another great thing too is that it's a Canon EF mount camera. So if you own any Canon lenses whatsoever, whether they're L series or kit lenses, this camera will work great with them. The small form factor of this camera is also a huge win. Now, ironically, people have been comparing this to the Sony a7 III or the Canon R series, but this really doesn't compare. That's like comparing apples to oranges. This camera is a cinema camera. So compared to other cinema cameras, it's actually a really, really small camera. The fact that you can get a camera that small and get the image that comes out of it is beyond mind blowing. Think about this, it's built for high quality cinematography, just like all of the other high-end cameras. And this dude is small compared to those cameras. It's pretty insane. The actual files themselves, when you upload them to Premiere or to DaVinci Resolve, they play flawlessly. The raw files especially, because they're raw and you can pretty much manipulate them after the fact, is pretty remarkable. And the last thing I'll say is the price point, which, still blows my mind to this day. Most high-end cinema cameras cost around $4,000 to $8,000 just for the body alone. If you're looking at RED cameras, you're looking more in the $10,000 range. But this camera body alone 
is only $2,000. Okay, so we got all of the good stuff out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about the cons of this camera because there are some extensive cons to it. Right out of the gate, let's talk about it. Battery life sucks. Not even an elephant in a room, it's something that everybody knows. You stick a battery into it, and if you're doing a continuous shooting, you're not gonna last more than 20 minutes. There are battery solutions to it. You can get a V-mount battery, you can get a bunch of those Sony batteries, and then mount it to it, rig it out, so that it can shoot for continuous amounts of times. So if you're doing long form shooting, then you're gonna have to figure out a pretty decent battery solution, or just use the DC adapter that comes with it, and you're pretty much Good to go but if you're only getting just a few seconds of some b-roll clips if you're on a vacation or if you're on location and you just need to get some shots of some things get a few of those canon batteries and then just turn the camera on and off get your clip turn the camera off and it'll pretty much last you a whole day the next thing about this camera is that it's an all manual camera there are some auto features to it but they are not good i do not recommend you using it and that's the thing with the camera, it's not really a con for me because I want to take my time with the shot. So this camera requires a lot of patience, it requires you to kind of sit there, think about your shot. The focus is manual, the ISO is manual, you're going to have to set the aperture manually, the white balance is manual. The camera definitely has some presets, but you get your best bang out of your buck if you use it manually. It can be used for running gun scenarios, especially if you use those function buttons up top. But for the most part, if you're running gun and you rely a lot on autofocus and auto white balance, this is not the camera for you. Though I have shot a wedding with this camera and I will be making a video about it. And the image that came out of this camera is enough for me to want to do it again. So that should speak for itself. Last thing I'll mention is storage capacity. Even shooting at the lowest resolution that this camera has to offer, it's still gonna give you some large file sizes. So your 32 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro card is not gonna be sufficient in order for you to capture a ton of clips. So you're either gonna have to buy a pretty expensive SD card or a pretty expensive CFast Express card, or you can go the route that I went and get an external SSD and connect it via USB-C to the camera, which literally nine times out of 10, out of 10 shoots that I've had, only once have I had to take out the cable and put it back in for it to read it. And that's pretty much it. Not terrible at all. But it's like I said, these file sizes are gonna be huge. So you're gonna have to invest in some external drives of some sort for your computer because they're not all gonna fit on your computer and they're not all gonna fit on a little one terabyte Western Digital Passport or whatever. So keep that in mind when buying this camera. So who is this camera for? Well, this camera is for somebody that really, really values image quality. It's one step closer to getting into real production cinematography. So that is it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a little bit longer than I anticipated. If you made it this far, well, hey, give yourself a pat in the back there, buddy. Did a great job. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I post more videos. I'm going to take a little bit of a break because I'm literally in the process of moving from South Florida to North Florida. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you know when I'm up there and I'm posting new videos, which I do plan on doing a lot. So thanks again for watching, I'll see you on the next one, peace.